Hi guys, welcome back to the Knitting Expert Podcast. My name is Mina. Today is Thursday the 16th of May. It's been exactly a month since I last recorded a podcast, but mainly that was because I've been traveling, so more about that later. Um, welcome. If you are new to this podcast, I hope you enjoy what you see. And, um, and yeah, thank you for checking me out. And if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. I really appreciate it. Um, I know I'm not super regular these days, but I do try and record every couple of weeks. So, um, so yeah, it's a really lovely day outside. It's not too sunny, but not too cold either. I've got the window open, so hopefully the street noise um, isn't too loud. And, um, and yeah, we'll get started. I've actually, it's almost one o'clock in the afternoon and I normally try and record my podcasts earlier in the morning. I've been trying to record this podcast since nine o'clock this morning and it's just constantly having to be put back for different reasons. Um, we had a couple of people come to uh, take a look at some stuff that needed to be fixed around the house and it's just as I got set up to sit down to start recording, um, uh, they showed up they showed up and uh thankfully they both showed up at the same time so i didn't have to wait all day for the other one and um and yeah so they doing their thing that took some time and then by the time they left then um perry was i was saying to Perry, okay i want to go up start recording now and i was really in the middle of something else so i was finishing that up then i was going to come up to record and then perry was like okay well i need to grab lunch then before you start because you're going to take a while and um I don't want him clanging around in the kitchen making a bunch of noise so I was like okay well then I might as well eat as well so finally lunch is eaten <laughs> all that said um finally ready to start recording this podcast all right so uh places where you can find me online <laughs> that might be helpful you can find me on Ravelry as Mina Philip on Instagram as Knitting Expat and you can find the group for this podcast on Ravelry as Knitting Expat Podcast in the groups tab um everything should be linked below this video on YouTube where you can go find it there are also show notes for this episode below the video on youtube as well um in terms of news we have some new patterns that have been published since i last spoke to you guys spoke to you guys we have the not so little nugget pullover has been finally been published i forgot to grab it to show you but you've seen it before and um that's the grown-up adult version of the little nugget pullover that i originally designed for my daughter when i was pregnant with her i revamped it earlier um last year or was it earlier this year i can't remember when i re-released it now but i revamped that pattern recently and then i was also working on the adult sized version and that has now been published and um and then also the mini delicious pattern club has launched officially the first pattern was released at the beginning of may and i have it here to show you it's the rainbow wings shawl which I am so in love with. Oh, is that, is that the right side? No, that's the back. Here we go. So it's a bit crumpled up because it's been folded up in the in my cupboard. But um, but yeah, I really love this one. I love the shape of it. It's slightly off kilter. It's a it's a kind of triangular shape, but it's slightly different. And um, and yeah, so you use one main colour skein for the main section of the shawl. And then you're using your minis to knit these wedges on one side to create this rainbow wing. And uh, and yeah, I use 12 minis, but you could easily, I use 12 10 gram minis, but you could easily just do it with 10 as well. All it would be is, you know, like that much shorter. It's still a plenty long shawl, like it's far wider than my wingspan by a lot. So even if you, and I'm quite tall, I'm about 5'10", 5 10, 5 foot 10. So even if you have two colors less at the end, you're only talking like what, three or four inches off the total length of the shawl. So really not losing much there. And also, again, if you had um, larger minis, you could knit these wedges larger and have fewer colors as well. So there's, there's room for flexibility with this pattern as well. And I really love this little rainbow stripe that shows up on the other side. I used yarn from Hugh Loco. And so this is, they're all on her 8020 Merino nylon base, which I think is her soft sock. I could be completely wrong. Um, but it's the 8020 blend, Merino sock, I think is what it's called. And it is, um, the gray is called the New Yorker. And the minis are from her fall minis palette set. If I'm, if I'm not mistaken. I believe yesterday I saw she posted on Instagram that she's got some of these in stock now as well. So if you wanted this exact set, you can go get that. Otherwise she does have other mini sets in her shop as well, which are great. Um, 
and also um, Kelly from Lay Family Yarns, she also recently did, um, let's say recently, she also put together some mini sets um, for this shawl, which she um, had for sale before the pattern released as well. I'm not sure if she still has them in her shop or not, but um, you can also check her out. If you're based in the UK, that might be a more accessible dyer for you because Nicole from Hugh Loco is based in the US. So if you're UK based, I know Kelly from Lay Family Yarns was um, dyeing minis specifically for this as well. So that's this pattern it is only available as part of the club right now um but towards the end of september the patterns will all be available for individual purchase from this club um there are three more designs that are going to be published you know on the first of each month coming up and um so yeah if you want to join in on the fun while the, the club is currently priced at a discount whilst it's running so if you want to join in on the fun by all means pop on over to Ravelry and you can purchase the club and you'll already you'll get this pattern straight away and also the bonus pattern which was available at the beginning as well so that's everything there um, and the other the other pattern that's been released which I don't have to show you is the whale song cow which I knit out of John Arbin um, yarns out of their knit by numbers in their DK and I I showed it to you on the podcast when I finished it. It was the cow that had cables on it. It looks like it looks like brioche, but it's actually out of fisherman's rib, and it um, it had cables and it, it starts out wider at the bottom and gets narrower at the top. If I can and if I remember, I will try and pop in a, um, a photo on the screen. But um, that pattern came out today, and you, there's a thirty percent coupon code if you use the code. Uh, John Arbin in all capitals. I'll put pop that on the screen here. If you use the code John Arbin, then you can get 30% off the pattern until the end of the day UK time on Sunday, the 19th of May. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. That's it, I think. I will have links to all of these patterns that I just mentioned below this video as well, so you can go directly to that pattern on Ravelry. But you can find all of my designs on Ravelry as Knitting Expat Designs, and that is also linked down below. Most things are linked. I'm just gonna put it out there. <laughs> okay, so moving right on, uh, we're gonna jump into finished objects. First finished object is actually a revisited finished object. I knit these socks for my dad a while ago now. I can't even, I'm usually really good at remembering the yarns and uh, dyers and colorway names and stuff, but I genuinely, I'm, I think this was a No Makers. Yes, I think it was a No Makers yarn. Um, on the tweed base. I just remember the dye now, but I can't remember the name of the colorway. Anyway, I knit these socks for my dad a while ago, and my parents were visiting last weekend, and um, was it last weekend? Or it was just, no, it was before we went away. They came for, they came and stayed for the weekend. And um, my dad was just sat down on the sofa, and I looked down at his foot, and he's wearing these socks. And then what do I see? This hole on the top of his foot. I'm like, how do you get a hole on top of your foot? If it was in the heel, in the toe, underneath the foot, somewhere, which is where typically he gets holes in his socks when he's worn through them before. Uh, or they're never in the heel. He's always worn them in like the ball of his feet. I'm like, how do you get a hole on the top of your sock? Like it doesn't wear anywhere. It doesn't rub against your shoe. Um, like I don't understand. He hasn't snagged it on anything. He doesn't remember it happening. My mum thinks they might have moths, but I don't, I don't know. Anyway. So I didn't have the exact yarn anymore, but I found a mini that was similar in color and just the little woven darn patch on it. So um, yeah, I have to get that back to my dad when I next see him. Um, so I just fixed his sock, first finished object or refinished object. Then um, another thing that I was working on is um, I'm working on a class idea that I have for teaching fisherman's rib and teaching um, like how to cable within fisherman's rib and stuff. And so I wanted to knit up a couple of samples to use for the class. And also I think this is a good sort of pattern to work on in the class, but just because they're quite small and um, easy to do. So the first was uh, to work fisherman's rib flat and the other one is to work fisherman's rib in the round. And then I'm also gonna do a, a third one where you're doing it in the round with the cabling um so yeah progressing from one stage to the next and so i thought the best thing to do for that would be headbands because they're they're not too wide they're not too big they're quite manageable sizes as a project and it's a good way to practice something both flat and in the round 
So the yarn that I used is, um, I had a skein of Oloops yarn on the Stellina base, I can't remember what the base is called, in the Amalfia colorway, and um, a skein of Malabrigo sock in Anniversario colorway, and Malabrigo sock is 100% merino, so both fingering weight. And so this is the one that I did uh, flat, so I'm, this is technically the right side with the lighter colour in the background and the darker. So the Malthea is the light colour and Anniversari Anniversario is the darker pink colour, pinky purple. And this is technically the wrong side, but you can obviously wear it either way around. Um, there is a seam where you seam them together, obviously because you're knitting this flat. And this is just to give, um, you know, some pra have some practice with knitting it back and forth and it looks quite small but it does actually fit on my head you know as a headband as it should um but yeah so it's meant to be something small a small project but it's also something that's practical that you can actually use at the end of it it's not like just a little square that you've knit and you don't know what to do with it at least this is a sort of practical finished sample piece that you can work on um and then in the round turned out like this um so with brioche or with fisherman's rib it tends to skew a little bit but i haven't blocked these yet but with blocking that would straighten out and um and yeah again this one actually turned out a little bit bigger than the other one but this one also fits perfectly well i'm hoping that layla might actually want to wear this at some point but little headbands are always handy to have um around the house i find they're quite useful sometimes especially if i'm cleaning or something and my hair's getting in the way um, so yeah, I've only got I've got one more to do, but these two are finished. Um, what did I use for it? I can't remember what needle size I used. Probably like 3.75 millimeters, I think, or four millimeters. I think it was four millimeters. Oh, cause yeah, that was it. I forgot to mention I held the yarn double. It is fingering weight, but I held the yarn double to get more of a DK worsted weight gauge. It's been a while since I knit these. I knit these before we went away on our trip, so. The details are a little bit fuzzy um, and then also before we went away on our trip I whipped up this hat this is the Yorkville hat uh, one of my designs again I will link it I will try and remember to link it I'm not great at rem remembering to link patterns but this one is available right now and this was part of the New York hat collection that I released when did I release it was it last year or the year before I think it was I think it was last year and um, and yeah, so it's just got this really fun texture pattern on it, which I have now turned into a sweater, uh, which I still need to write that up and grade it. But um, I wanted, I was hoping that whilst we were away, I'd have an opportunity to be able to get some pattern photos of the sweater, because I took it with me. But it just never worked out that I was able to do that. But I wanted the hat to be able to wear with it in the photos. So I whipped this up quickly before we went away and I still haven't actually blocked it. So this is it pre-blocked. It looks really small, but it does fit quite well on my head. It's just the nature of the pattern. So this was knit using three and a half millimeter needles for the ribbing and a four and a half millimeter for the body. The pattern actually calls for four millimeters for the body, but I didn't have any spare four millimeter needles in the right cable length to do this. So I just used four and a half and it's fine. Um, it works out fine. Um, I feel like I'm rushing through this a little bit, but I'm conscious of the fact that I am surrounded by stuff and I don't want this to take forever. So, um, and the last finished object I have to show you, I have actually finished a couple of other things, but I can't show them to you because they're secret. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so this is the shawl that I finished. This is also a design of mine that I will be writing up and publishing soon. And yeah, I am so excited by this one because it is knit out of my handspun. So this was handspun that I showed you on the podcast, maybe if not the last one, the one before it, where I... Um, I had a pack, I guess, of blended roving, I think, of different roving, um, sorry, bat bits, that's what it was called, it was urchins from, it was an urchins pack from Spin Jones in the crocus colorway, and the urchins are basically just little bat bits that she's blended to create like a color gradient, as it were, so it starts out with this sort of like pale green and transitions into this yellow, to this like pinky purple, into a darker purple at the end. So I spun that up as a single end to end, like just from one to the next to the next. And then I plied it with um, a single that I spun from of a white uh, fibre, which was a 100% Polworth top from John Arman Textiles. So I spun those 
and then I applied them together to create this sort of mild gradient effect, which I really like how it turned out. It was super fun to do and it was a really fun way to spin a gradient yarn but also kind of tone it down a little bit with the white so it's not like super super stark. It's turned out to be a really nice size. It works really well wearing it bandana style or even traditionally over the shoulders. You can get the end there. It's hiding from me. There we go. It's really good length, nice and cozy and snug around the neck. So it starts with a little garter good old garter stitch at the beginning and it's got a really fun uh, textured pattern over here it has a slightly lacy look to it but that's just the nature of how the pattern is worked there are there are actually no eyelets in this um, and then it has a nice wide um, ribbed border which you may or may not be able to tell on camera you can see it at the bottom here but it does start like up here all of this is ribbed um, it's a nice wide rib so really easy to work and yeah I absolutely love it I really love this shawl and I can't like I said I can't wait to get this out to you guys um so yeah that's it for finished objects I finished a fair amount maybe not as much as I normally would have given that it's been a month since I last recorded um I did have a period well basically most of last week after we got back I really didn't knit much at all I was focusing on getting um back on track with work and everything I'd missed and catching up on emails and then it got to got to Wednesday of last week and I haven't hadn't really made as much progress as I'd liked and then I realized I was looking around my office this, our spare room is also my office I was looking around and I realized the room was in such a state and I still had a couple of boxes from when our stuff came over from New York that I hadn't sorted through and it was making me really anxious and I had some other things that I had to sort through and decide what we were keeping and what was going into storage that were not work related and I realized the mess was stopping me from being able to make progress on my work so I was like you know what fine I took the whole day on Thursday, I took it off from work, took the whole day and sorted out that room. It still looks a bit of a mess, but it's now at least organised. It's organised mess and I know where everything is and I know what everything is supposed to be. Um, there are still boxes that need to go into storage, but they've been sorted and they've been allocated that the Perry just needs to take them out to the garage. Uh, I would do it, but they're too heavy for me. And uh, um, yeah, and there's a couple of other things that need to go somewhere I just haven't figured out where they're gonna go yet like to be stored or um, I actually need to get some under the bed storage boxes for the guest room bed to be able to store some stuff in at the moment they're sat in boxes in like cardboard boxes because I have nowhere else to store them but they've been organized the room has been organized my desk has been somewhat organized it is organized my desk is organized it just looks a bit full of stuff I don't have any drawers or anywhere where I can put stuff away so everything is still out but it's organized and I know where everything is so my hope is that throughout the course of the week stuff gets messy and then at the end of the week when I finish working on a Thursday afternoon I can just tidy everything up, put everything away now that I know where everything's supposed to go. I could just tidy it away and it'll be clean and at least organised over the weekend. So when I come to sit down to do work again on Tuesday morning I am not overwhelmed by how messy everything is. Um, that's the plan. We will see how that goes. Alright, ramble done. I forgot to mention with that shawl, I had um, 206 grams of fiber of yarn that I'd spun up and this was all I had left at the end after I bound off. It's about four grams, so just over 200 meters, oh sorry, 200 grams was used. I can't remember what the finished yardage was of the shawl that I, that I used up for the shawl, but it was around, I genuinely can't remember, about 600 yards I think maybe. I have to double check but um, I didn't write that down on my notes anyway moving on to uh, works in progress I have three works in progress and that is literally all I have going right now um, and as of yesterday it was only two so the first work in progress and you guys will be shocked because this was cast on um, the last time I podcast so about a month ago I cannot remember the last time I've had a pair of socks on the needles for a month like genuinely I cannot remember but these are the mallard socks that um, is by the yarn is by West Yorkshire spinners in their mallard colorway it's from their birds line it's the signature four ply and um, and yeah I'm on the toe decreases like literally have about 10 rows left before this is finished but the reason why is I took this on our trip with us and I never knit on them while we were away I took these away I didn't knit 
a single stitch on a pair of socks actually i lie i didn't knit on these until the return journey from france back home that's when i'd finished the shawl and um this was it so then i picked these up and i started knitting on them but i was still back down at the cuff so um i took these with me to france and basically didn't knit on them for the whole two weeks that we were i was in france to europe i didn't knit on them for the whole two weeks that we were away i was working on another design and then the shawl so those were my main knitting projects whilst we were traveling and again i didn't actually get to knit much whilst we were actually in places most of my knitting time was in the car when we were traveling from one place to the next um so because usually by the evenings by the time later had gone to bed perry and i were just so tired absolutely shattered after like a long day out and doing stuff and then coming back home and getting her to sleep and all this and that so um i just didn't have a lot of energy for knitting in the evenings as much as i normally would have so um this didn't get any work on them and i've only been working on them intermittently in the last couple of weeks since we've been back and like i said because last week i had this whole um uh, feeling of being quite overwhelmed with all the rubbish in the room and needing to sort out the room that I didn't really work on these that much um, as a result I didn't work on like much knitting at all last week but anyway these are almost done they'll be probably done this afternoon to be honest they could have been finished yesterday I just didn't pick them up I cast on something else so um, <laughs> more about that in a minute so that's the first pair of socks and uh, this is on 2.25 millimeter needles on Chiagu's. I use 40 inches when I knit two at a time or I use uh, 32 inches if I'm working um, one at a time concurrently. That's my other method of knitting socks. Anyway, so we got back from Europe and a day or two after we got back, I decided to go watch Endgame on my own at the cinema, which is fine. Don't, don't feel sad. Perry when I saw it whilst we were in Europe, he couldn't wait any longer. So I went to go watch it on my own. But those socks, the first socks I showed you, were at a point um, down the leg where I was only about 20 rows away from the heels. So I knew if I took them with me, I wasn't gonna be able to knit on them for the whole film. And it's a three hour movie. So um, I really wanted to have a pair of socks to knit on. So I cast on a new pair of socks. And this is yarn, self-striping yarn from um, Tiny Human Knits. Get this to focus. There we go. And this is on her folklore colorway. It's on her sock base. I did split the ball, so I wound up half the ball into a cake. And um, I've picked out three of the minis that she sent me to use as contrasts for the, for the socks. So the first mini I used was this blue, this blue green rather. It's more green than blue. And then I've knit the leg, and I knit most of this during the film. I think I knit up to about here in the movie from the cuff to here and then just do this last little bit now i'm ready to pop in the heel i think the heel is going to be this color because it matches most closely with where i'm at the stripe i'm on this like golden stripe and um and yes yeah, so this will be the heel and then this one will be the toe at the end so that's the plan and yeah i'm just waiting to put the heel in on these but there's no like huge urgency to this i will probably put the heel on this soon and then keep it as um, you know, car knitting, knitting when I've got Layla around and stuff like that. That was the other reason I hadn't knitted these that much because until, when did I? Yeah, because both of these ended up getting to the point where I needed to put heels in, both of them, um, by around like the middle of last week. So, and I just didn't have any time over the weekend or towards the end of last week to sit down and just put the heels in properly. Um, to be able to then move forward with them. So I did that on the mon on the mallard one and then it was all fine. I feel like I'm just really babbling now. <sighs> anyway, finally, on to my last work in progress, which I just cast on yesterday. And so this was actually the majority of my work yesterday was working on this project and not on the physical actual knitting part of it, but this part of it, the part that involved sheets upon sheets upon sheets of maths and figuring stuff out <sighs> it was quite a journey to figure out all the numbers for this pattern but this is finally you may recognize the yarn this is um going to be perry's gansey sweater that i'm designing for him and i am knitting it out of um this is lola did it on her gansey sport base 
in the Rumpelstiltskin colorway and it's showing up slightly darker on camera like the green is a little bit more of like a it's a little bit I don't know it's, I guess it's a little bit more yellow it toned in real life like it's more of like a grassy green um, I don't know it looks pretty good on camera I'll grab another full skein as you can see um, but yeah, it's this really nice tonal variegated, it's not variegated, but it's very tonal, um, has a lot of variegation within it of the same colours of greens, and it's also got little pops of orange throughout as well. So I finally cast on, it's going to be a bottom-up sweater, and, uh, and yeah, so I'm just on the ribbing at the beginning, and that's as far as I got yesterday with that, got about 10 rows of ribbing in and i'm just trying to find the swatch okay so this is the swatch that i did and then i sat down with perry and went over it with him to see what he wanted so he decided i was i tried out like a traditional channel island cast on um which i quite like it gives a really like nice sort of decorative edge to it at the, at the top but perry just preferred a straight regular cast on bind off he just he likes the look of this better he prefers that so that's what we're going with and he's just gone for a regular one by one rib um and we're going for a background of seed stitch with this um cable pairing as well and so this is going to be the main body pattern for the for this for the sweater for the sleeves right now i am it's, it's bottom up with uh satin sleeves so he wants it fitted again traditionally gansies are drop shoulder sort of construction and they sometimes even have like um underarm gussets which i thought was really interesting but um perry's not into that <laughs> and he doesn't need all the added room that that gives you whereas traditionally like a gansey would be for fishermen and stuff like that so they needed the mobility to be able to move their arms and stuff perry doesn't need that as much so he prefers a more fitted um structure i guess and um what was I saying? So yeah, for the sleeves, I'm thinking at the moment of just doing a panel of cables going down the front with seed stitch around it. Um, but I'm not sure if it'll be a panel of, of cables with a little bit of seed stitch either side and the rest of the sleeve in stock in it, or if it'll be all in seed stitch. I haven't, haven't fully decided on that yet. Um, I think once we get there, I will, I'll see what Perry wants at the nearer the time because I am designing this for him but I'm also going to be releasing it as a pattern um I've currently got it sized for 10 sizes I've got 10 sizes done up for this and it actually works out it I was so lucky <laughs> that my first um when I settled on like the sizes I was going for and then figure out my first go at figuring out how I wanted the stitch pattern to look and then doing the maths, it worked out perfectly for every single size. And I was just like, yes, this never happens. This never happens. Usually I have to go back and like finagle the stitch pattern to make it work, or maybe one or two sizes needed to be slightly different, but it works fine for the rest of them. Like I had none of those issues. <laughs> Thankfully, the one thing that worked was the stitch pattern worked with the stitch gauge, worked perfectly for what I wanted to, um, to fit in with all the different sizes. So, that was a win that was a designing win right there um but i've gone through and worked out everything for all the different sizes so essentially this is my draft pattern um because i have little steps and instructions in there as well so i know what i'm doing i'm going to be knitting perry's off of this and his is actually the fourth out of the 10 sizes so it's somewhere in the middle there size wise uh and it'll range from a 36 to 72 inch finished garment measurement chest circumference and the idea being that you wear it with around somewhere between four and eight inches of ease i think depending on how much ease you want um i think i'm knitting it for perry with about six inches of ease um that's how much um, i basically took taking the measurements not only off perry but his favorite jumper sweater he's got a cabled store-bought sweater that he has that he really likes so i took some measurements from that as well and based on how he likes the fit of that that has about six inches of ease on him so that's what i'm going with for this one and fingers crossed it all works out okay um i think i mentioned that was lolo did its guernsey sport base but i didn't tell you what the fiber content was it's 85 percent merino and 15 percent silk it is a non-superwash yarn base which I really like and the silk will give it some nice drape as well as it gives it a really beautiful sheen to the to the yarn okay 
So that is it for finished objects and works in progress. That is the knitting portion done. We now have spinning to chat about. And whilst there may have not been much um, knitting last week, there was a lot of spinning going on. <laughs> Everything bar this skein here was knit um, in the last week and a half. So knit, spun. It was spun in the last week and a half. All right. So we'll get started with the first thing. So if you're not aware, I am co-hosting a spin and make along, a smell, um, with Grace of the Babbles Travelling Yarns podcast. And it started on Monday last week, which is the 6th of May. And it is the spin, this is the spinning portion that's started on Monday. And it is running until the end of July. And then from the 1st of August until the end of November, we are running the making portion of the smell where you, um, make things with the yarn that you spun in the spinning portion and there's a whole video about it and stuff that you can find on my youtube channel and i will have links to the knit along knit along to the make along the smell the spin and make along below this video as well um so you can head over to the channel thread and see what that's all about and join in the fun honestly i am amazed and absolutely overwhelmed by the response to this spin and make along and how many people are jumping on board so many people are digging out their wheels uh, that have been in storage for a while or they haven't touched for a while and people are um buying spindles to just try spinning for the first time it's amazing and i'm really loving seeing everyone's um progress and um just seeing people enjoy spinning so the first thing i decided to spin was this set of um minis so i had two this is also fiber from spin jones if you if you can't tell i really like spin jones fiber um her prep is lovely and um so i had a set of i guess uh what was it it was called her muddle rainbow pack so the fibre was a mix of merino, manx lochton and tussa silk and I had a, each pack is six 20 gram bits of blended top in different colours in the six colours I showed you here. So I had two packs of that so what I decided what I was going to do was um, spin each 20 gram piece from each pack individually and then ply them together in a two ply so that's what I did and this is this is everything and yeah i'm really excited about it so this is going to be i don't know if you saw the first hand spun shawl that i knit was a design of mine and i knit that back in january and i showed it to you but i also explained that i wasn't going to be writing it up because the transition sections just did not allow the flexibility i wanted for people to just be able to do the transition whenever they wanted which is kind of the point with using hand spun is that you can switch things up whenever you want and make it customizable so um and that's just the way i like writing my patterns in general when i can and it just wasn't lending itself to that so i wanted to rethink it so i, I spun this up to rework that design this has actually spun up a little bit thicker than the yarn i used for that one which is fine this is more of a sport to decay weight whereas the first one was more of a fingering sport weight but that's fine that's the beauty of hand spun it's not going to be the same every time and um that was the beauty of that design it was supposed to work with any way to be on so um i'm gonna give that a shot soon ish i think not sure if i'm gonna wait until august to do it i kind of want to get the design done and out for people to be able to use during august if that's what they want to spin um use their hand spun for um so yeah that's really exciting i told you it was from spin giants i basically i mainly used a short forward draw to draft this and then just did a regular two ply um i ended up having 254 grams of fiber which turned into 588 yards or 537 meters of finished yarn in a sport to dk ish weight um so yeah really happy with how that's turned out um and then then i decided to do a just for fun sort of spin which was um, a braid of fibre that I'd gotten from um, Spin City UK at Edinburgh this year, at Edinburgh Yarn Festival. And it was a really beautiful um, autumnal colour, like yellows and oranges and super sparkly braid. And it had a whole mix of fibres in it. I'm, I can't remember all the fibres that were in it, but obviously there was some like Angelina or Firestar, whatever the sparkle is. And um, I also specifically remember them telling me that it had... Um, banana fiber in it as well so that was interesting i've never spun anything with banana fiber in it but i will be honest the finished result is not quite what i was expecting it's definitely a lot muddier 
than I hoped. And I, I realized that halfway through spinning it that it was just gonna look really muddy. And I just sort of went with it because at that point there wasn't much I could do. Um, and I don't like to waste fiber. So I thought I'd finish it and see how it turns out. And the actual spin turned out fine. Um, it, this has turned out to be a pretty consistent, for the most part, fingering weight with bits that are a bit more sport weightish, but it's quite a dense fiber. It's 100, it's almost, it's 97 grams, it's 210 yards, 192 meters, which is pretty dense for a fingering weight. But typically that's the sort of yardage you'd get on a commercial, like DK worsted weight skein. But this is definitely not a DK or a worsted weight yarn. Um, it feels a little bit, not as soft as the braid felt, but I also noticed when spinning the, not only the Stellina um, made it feel a bit more rough, but also the banana fiber. The banana fiber, when I first started coming across it as I was spinning, I kept thinking it was like veg matter that I had to like pick out. It felt like twigs, almost like bits of twigs or bits of like, like wood shavings or whatever in there. And it felt a bit weird spinning it. Like it wasn't uncomfortable. It just, every time I got to it, I had to remind myself I don't have to stop and like pick out a bit that feels like veg matter but um but yes yeah, so that's kind of meant it feels less it doesn't feel as soft as the braid did it's not rustic it's not scratchy or anything well it's a little bit scratchy but um you know you could wear this as a hat or as mittens or something else um or it'd actually be quite cute as like an amigurumi type thing i think anyway not sure what this is going to be um but it's it's interesting it's hand spun and i think there's always an opportunity to learn. I feel like maybe in the future I would have, um, I would think about maybe splitting up the braid a bit more to separate out the colors and maintain some like sections with specific colors in it so it wouldn't be quite so muddied. I don't know, we'll see. Um, it was an interesting, it was interesting to see how it spun up nonetheless. Maybe if I'd spun it thicker, I, I actually originally had planned to spin this thicker um, when I set out to spin it. But then naturally it just wanted to be spun quite fine. So I just went with it. I spun it how it wanted to be spun and I just sort of went with that. Um, but I feel like if I had tried to specifically spin it thicker, then um, maybe it wouldn't have looked quite as muddy. So anyway, you live and learn. And that's kind of the whole point of this. And the next one I want to show you is actually a really good example of like the whole live and learn aspect. Um, this was a 50 gram bundle of roving that I had, it's black Shetland um, roving. And I actually also picked this up at Edinburgh. I picked this up at the Make Wool event on the Sunday from Hawkshaw Sheep. So you're really not gonna be able to tell much. Oh, there we go. It's blowing out the camera a little bit, but hopefully you'll be able to see some details once it focuses. There we go, you can see that there. And I started spinning this short forward draw. And I will be honest, this roving was not my favorite to spin. It was very, I don't know how to even describe it. Like the staple lengths didn't feel that long at all for Shetland. And it felt like trying to spin a cloud. It felt very poofy, um, didn't have much. It wasn't easy to like spin. And with the short forward draw, it felt very, um, Oh, what's the word? Cumbersome. It was very cumbersome. It wasn't comfortable. It wasn't, it's really hard to describe it in a way that makes sense. Um, it wasn't comfortable to spin that way. Um, and it just didn't really want to be spun that way almost. It felt like it was trying to fight the fiber too much. So then I decided to just try spinning it long draw and then suddenly it was a lot easier to spin it. It was easier to spin it, but it was a lot less consistent. The long draw was coming out sort of thick and thin, coming out in clumps in certain parts. This is what I mean by the fiber just wasn't very um, easy to work with. And it still had a lot of lanolin, lanolin in it, which wasn't uncomfortable to work with. It didn't, I didn't mind. It still has quite a bit in it, even though I washed it with some wool wash. But, um, but yeah, and it's still got a fair bit of veg matter in there as well. But again, not something I mind about. But what I really wanted to show you was the difference between how the um, yarn looked when I spun it um, short draw, short forward draw versus long draw. And I chain plied this as well. So it's actually a three ply. Um, there's, if I can find it now, because the first, there's some strands in here that were from the short forward draw section. And those actually, it's actually quite amazing because I've never been able to spin a fingering weight chain ply 
but these came out as a fingering weight so if I can spread these out a little bit you can see them these definitely came out as a fingering fingering weight but you can see how like uneven that is um, compare and then these were spun sort of long draw style and for the most part I was actually able to spin these with an unsupported long draw um, which I'd never really been able to do before so there was nothing wrong with the fibre per se I just feel like maybe I wasn't particularly comfortable as a relatively newer spinner um, to working with this um, this kind of roving but like I said it was a good learning experience and I really enjoyed it it was um, once I switched to doing it long draw um, it was interesting because I was able to get a fingering weight when I did short forward draw but it just felt really uncomfortable whereas doing it long draw yielded more of a DK worsted weight but it felt more comfortable so I guess that's just what this wanted to be so I ended up with about 50 I had 56 grams um, and it turned out to be 103 yards slash 94 meters and um, and yeah that's what that turned out to be so the last thing I spun and I actually just did this last night so I haven't watched it yet was if you watched I posted yesterday a video about how I was deciding to divide up and spin the fiber that I was going to spin to go along with this skein for my sweater spin and so one of the um, sort of bundles of fibre put together was going to be for like a little 50 gram uh, skein and I spun that last night. I spun and then I applied it. So this was using about 25-ish grams, well half of the skein, so one ply was a green, um, oh jeez, that. Okay, minor disaster averted. <laughs> Turns out like a honeybee just flew into the room, the window was open. I have now closed it, but a honeybee flew into the room and I just panicked. Um, the problem is like I have this like insane, if you're new, I have this like insane fear about bees and wasps. Less so about bees, more about wasps, because wasps are the devil. But um, the problem is I don't hang around long enough to find out what it is. <laughs> Wait, I see something that buzzes and it's headed my way. I'm, I'm God, um, as you may have seen. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, Perry, Perry caught it and let it go back outside. It was a honeybee, was not a wasp, thankfully. Like I said, wasps are the devil. But uh, bees, I don't mind so much. They're good. <laughs> bees are good. They can stick around. Just, just don't come into my house. Um, anyway. <laughs> I'm all about saving the bees. I just don't want them near me. Um, anyway, come. What I was saying. So this was what I spun last night. Back on topic. Um, the green ply was actually quite close in colour. There was one ply which was a green green um, Portland fleece blended with some black alpaca, and the other ply was some blue uh, blue face Leicester blended with some um, black alpaca as well. And both of these fibres were from my fibre share partner that I took I took part in the fibre share swap earlier this year and really enjoyed it and I'm really loving working up this fibre. So this was a 50 gram um, skein. Even though it measures at like a sport weight I guess, um, it only yielded um, 115 yards or 105 metres out of 48 grams. That's before being washed so it'll probably lose a little bit of yardage as well. So that was a little bit less than I was expecting but um, but that's fine. I still have plenty of fibre to spin up, and uh, yeah, so it'll be interesting to see how these go together. They are they look very different. They also feel quite different. So it'll be interesting. This this sweater is going to be, although the colours work well together. You can see there's a lot of these colours in this skein, especially in that section there. So they will go well together. So it's be interesting to see how this sweater is going to shape up at the end of the day. Um, and yeah. That's that, that's everything on the spinning front. I have a lot to show you in terms of acquisitions. <laughs> I mean, this box is full. <laughs> but um, on that note, I do actually have some other things that have come in that I haven't 
put in this box to show you mainly fiber i have a john arvin textiles fiber order that should be arriving later today and also um i may place another fiber order with hilltop cloud that should probably be coming either tomorrow or next week but i'm thinking i'm just going to do a separate um spinning haul type video like a fiber haul video and i have a um as part of the smile vlogs i guess and keep that kind of separate rather than um including it in the podcast just because it will take forever otherwise just going through all this yarn alone is going to take a while but i will persevere <laughs> so first up really quickly because uh, i talked about these on the vlogs if you're not aware i did vlog um our whole trip through europe um on this channel as well so there are five vlogs one for each um, country city that we stayed in so um, you can go check those out and I did talk about the yarns that I got as we traveled around as well but I thought I would quickly go over them again now for those of you who don't watch the vlogs or maybe aren't interested in watching the vlogs but I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on them so nope that's the wrong one so um, first up in actually well, all of this came from the Netherlands, looking at it. Um, um, there we go. Sorry, getting myself in a mix jumble here. So all of this is actually from the Netherlands. So the first up, these two skeins that I got from my lovely friend, Caroli Caroline. Caroline? Um, I always get muddled up with the names. It's actually just Caroline in English, but it's Caroline in Dutch. So I wanted to pronounce it correctly. She used to dye yarn as Zazu yarns and we met up whilst I was in um, the Netherlands. And um, and yeah, she gifted me with these two beautiful skeins. You can definitely see the colors a lot better here than you could on the vlog. So um, this is just on a sock base. I actually need to double check with her what the blend is, but that doesn't particularly matter to me. It's about, I guess it's about 400 meters per skein. And so this will be a lovely something or other. I haven't decided what yet but it would actually be quite nice as like a top i think i quite like dark colors on tops um that's what i got from her and then we also went to the yarn shop sticks and cups in i'm gonna butcher this name in utrecht utrecht i can't i can't pronounce it it's about an hour outside of amsterdam and um it's another lovely uh city town and so the sticks plus six and cups um shop and the owner and her mum are actually both Iranian as well, uh, or originally, I guess, both Iranian. And uh, they also dye yarn as their own own house yarn. So I picked up a couple of skeins of their yarn. This one here is the Sock Sanity base. So it's a 75% wool, 25% uh, nylon in the Fenrir colorway, which I believe is the Harry Potter reference. And this one is on their Sock Extravagance base. It's a 80% merino, 20% polyamide in the Lyle's Golden um, Syrup. Yeah, Lyle's Go Golden Syrup co colorway. Um, so this one, because it's a wool nylon blend, it's a little bit more of a rustic feel than the merino nylon blend. This one will probably be socks for my dad. Because as I've mentioned before, I refuse to knit him merino based socks anymore because he just wears through them too quickly. Um, and then in Amsterdam, I went to Stephen and Penelope's because, of course, if you go to Amsterdam and you're a knitter, you have to check out Stephen and Penelope. And I picked up a skein of Westwall and the bicycle base, which is 10% textile, 90% Falkland Merino. And I got it in this rather neutral um, grey, which is the Pebble. Um, mainly because I couldn't decide which colour I wanted and I didn't want to get more than one skein, I only wanted one. So I couldn't decide what I wanted to do with it. So this is 390 yards or 350 metres and 100 grams. It is roughly a sport weight. What I'm planning on doing is pairing this with some hand spun for a project. My default hand spun is around a fingering sport weight so it would actually pair quite well with something like this. And the feel of it, it's not super rustic but it has that sort of... Um, it's a, it's a nice two-ply, so it would work well with most of my two-ply hand spuns as well. So I feel like, I mean, I'm not going to use it with this, but it's something that would pair well with one of my more colourful hand spun skeins. So I think that's what this is going to be used for at some point. And I also picked up a skein of Crazy Zalba Ball because I, I really love knitting with Crazy Zalba Balls. They are really fun and um, 
quite crazy as the name suggests so this will either be socks for my dad or for someone else but these will probably be a gift knit at some point in the future they're really fun and they do have that hand spun vibe to them because of the barber poly and uh yeah so this was in the uh let's see um okay i can't tell what part of this tag is actually the color name so i'm just going to show you and you can see i'm sure someone will be able to tell me in the comments what colorway this is yeah so that was that that's all the yarn that i got on our trip um and then shortly after we got home actually just before we went away i also wanted to talk about this quickly i got was sent a copy of the annual by john alvin textiles i had meant to pick this up at edinburgh yarn festival but i never i just forgot to be quite honest it was so busy there was so much going on i just didn't have a chance and i have read through parts of this i haven't read it through completely i've been savoring it but this is their first issue of the annual they've um they've just started doing this so it's kind of like a magazine about all their yarns and their fibers but it also has patterns in it, it has articles it has like some fun games to play and there's some really lovely illustrations and drawings in here by katie green who has the green bean podcast as well so i just want to do a quick little review of this if you haven't seen it already i think i believe it's only five pounds so a lovely little thing to have and it has some patterns in here as well so you have um post box uh, well the postman just came <laughs> so there's um i'll give you some there's information here about some of their different yarn bases so there's some info here about the harvest hues range which i absolutely love the harvest hues range it's beautiful there's um patterns so there's uh, I believe this is a stole or a scarf, um, which is really beautiful. Let me show you the pictures. Okay. And there's also like really fun things, like I said, little games in here. So there's a word search on this side. Um, again, and then again, more information about some of their yarns they carry in it by numbers. Um, the Ralph Packer two to three fly yarn. There's all sorts in here trying to find some other stuff there's more patterns i can't remember how many patterns are in here but there's definitely a bunch there's one two three four uh four patterns i believe yeah four patterns which is be which is great for like and it's only five pounds for the book so that's like one pound 25 per pattern which is really good more information about different yarns so there's an article in here about john's favorite um mill machine butler so there's a whole article about that um again more information about some of their things some of their yarns i mean they have a spot the difference which is a really another which is a cute little drawing by katie green as well I haven't done that one yet and then oh they have a lovely sort of like color swatch page of all of their different knit by numbers yarns as well which is really beautiful this is the yarn that i used um i used the dk weight of this yarn for the whale song um cow that i knit and I used, if I can find them on here, I used number 11, which is this grey down here, and number 75, which was this sort of like maroony red. Let's see. Oh, and I love this section. They have um, little bios on all the different people who work at the mill as well, including Mr. Smoke, the mill cat, which is really cute. Um, Um, like I said, really lovely. This is my favourite one. Find Mr. Smoke. It's a little um, like where's where's Wally type of drawing again by Katie Green, with um, where you can find uh, Mr. Smoke is hiding in like ten different places in the mill, in this drawing. So you got to find the cat in ten different places. I'm actually look forward to doing this with Layla later. Get her to see if she can find the cat in the in the page. Um, and then they have information about some of their tops and fibers that they sell really beautiful colors and at the end there's some tidbits and like information about what's going on at the mill so actually there's an article sorry before I get there there's an article about how John and his wife started the mill or rather how they got into it and then little bits of information about how to become a mill member which I highly recommend doing 
um, I did that recently and it's been great so far. You get discounts and then you get like a little welcome package and it's a lifetime membership. It's like £25. Um, really well worth it. Um, there's, an there's information about their open weekend and there's also some um, info here about some future plans they have about new things coming to the shop and things that they're planning. So, so yeah, all in all, a really, really good um, magazine, I guess, annual. I'm not sure what you would call this. I think it's like a little magazine. Um, I'm not sure how often they're planning on releasing these, if it's going to be every year or every quarter, every six months, I'm not sure. But either way, definitely well worth it, I believe. Uh, got some really good information in there and some lovely designs as well. Um, so that was something I actually received before we went away. Since getting back, I've had a few things come in the post. One thing was my solidarity swap package. So the solidarity swap was set up by a group of people um, in the hopes of like promoting and connecting people with uh, black and indigenous people of black and indigenous people of color. And so a bunch of whoever wanted to take part signed up to be part of this swap. And I signed up for a yarn swap. And so I was paired with the lovely Steffi, who is the dyer behind Ushitita yarns. So Steffi and I uh, actually got to meet at Edinburgh, which was great. We got to have a quick little chat. She was super busy. Her store was so rammed the whole weekend, which was amazing. I'm so happy that they had such a good weekend. And then um, shortly after we got back from Edinburgh, uh, she was, she got really ill and a few things were going on and then I got busy. Either way, both of us were a bit late sending our packages out, but both of us were totally fine with that. And Steffi completely spoiled me with her package. We were only supposed to send a skein of yarn. And this is what arrived. Um, so this was the yarn that she sent me. It's um, Ushitita Merino Sock in the Papa Don't Peach colorway, which I think is really quite cute. 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, and it's uh, 425 meters or 464 yards in 100 grams. And it's a beautiful, beautiful skein. It's quite funny because the skein I sent her was um, just very similar colors, just darker overall. So I thought it was quite funny that we were both on the same wavelength when it came to color choice. Then she also sent me some sweet treats from, the, she's also from the Netherlands, but unfortunately the, tr the way that we were traveling through the Netherlands, uh, we weren't going anywhere near where she's based. Otherwise it would have been lovely to drop in and say hi on our way through. But she sent some uh, white chocolate uh, tulips and some, like, just some mixed sweets as well from Holland. And then this is the bit where she really went above and beyond and I was totally blown away. This beautiful sorry, necklace, it's by Star Fiber Studio. I'll show you up close in a second. So it's starfiberstudio.etsy.com and it's a little, um, progress keeper on the on the card as well but look at this it's one of these necklaces with this cord um and you have all these stitch markers progress keepers attached to the end here so there's this one with the, like the stone and this can also be a progress key a uh, regular stitch marker or a progress keeper or both clasps on there part of me wants to take the lobster clasp off and just keep this as a pendant i think it's so beautiful Um, and then we have a P for pearl and there's a K for knit as well and there's two of these there's I think I think they're both foxes just in different positions get that to focus there you go not sure how well you can see that but they are beautiful so that's absolutely just sort of blew me away but then the thing that really just like did it I like just pushed me over the edge in that was this amazing look at this look how beautiful that is and if you can't tell on camera which i think you probably can this is so shiny has such a sheen to it and it is so soft it is literally like like kittens it's so fluffy so soft and you can't tell it's fiber it's camel silk and merino i've never spun camel so this will be really exciting and really fun and it's just so I don't know what the percentages are or what the colorway for this fiber is. I'm not even sure if Steffi 
dyes fiber regularly for her shop or not i've not seen it in there before um maybe i've just missed it but um she hasn't put any percentages on it so i don't know what the percentage contents are or the color of this is but this is absolutely gorgeous and i can't wait to work on this at some point i might take off a little bit and just play with the sample of it just to see how it spins and then to try and figure out how i might want to spin it later but but yeah this is going to be mm, so soft so squishy I'll pop all these back in the bag move that out of the way and then um whilst we were away in europe i was on you know, what was how what it was like one evening before layla went to bed I managed to sneak off for five minutes and I just decided to randomly check Instagram and I don't and I, I don't know why but that day I just decided to randomly check Instagram and I was sort of flicking through the stories section and I came up on um, Ocean's stories Ocean by the Sea and I was really fortunate to get to meet her at Edinburgh as well we didn't get a lot of time together but I managed to give her a hug and say hello um, and I completely messed up that weekend and completely uh, got confused about when her pop-up shop was going to be so I, completely, I missed it basically i missed out on being able to get her yarn at edinburgh which i was really gutted about but um so i was scrolling through stories i got to her stories and saw that she just had a shop update about an hour ago and i was like okay there's probably not going to be anything left but i'll go over and see just in case there's anything still available and there was and i just hopped on it really quickly and bought the skein that i that i really liked the look of and there was a lot in her shop that i still left in her shop that i really liked but I decided not to be greedy and I just got one skein and it came and I haven't actually opened it up yet not probably because I wanted to show you how beautifully it comes packaged um, although the lavender has slowly been losing its buds over the <laughs> over the course of the last week or so um, it's been like littering little bits of lavender everywhere which I totally don't mind but so that's the lavender and I'm just gonna open it up on camera for you guys. I haven't done this before. It smells amazing. It still smells of like lavender. She wraps it so beautifully in like fabric. Like I'll be using this fabric for something else later as well. Oop. And so this was the yarn that I ordered which looking at it now, I think I ordered the same skein that um, Grace from Babbles Traveling Yarns ordered when she ordered from her a while back and she knit a cowl out of her yarn. It's beautiful. So this is on her BFL Donegal um, fiber. The base is Fleck, so it's like a tweed base. The color is Beachcomber and the weight is it's an aran weight so it's 166 meters or 181 yards in 100 grams um and it says on there i'll relax in a nice warm bath with bubbles which is beautiful and then the paper wrap that's wrapped around it has um bits of plants and like and petals petals on it as well i'll focus there we go it's really stunning and then she also sent a little little tea bag and also a little mini skein to go with it as well. Which is beautiful. Pink's not usually my colour, but I'll keep that for like a pop of colour with like a pair of socks or something. I think that would look quite cute. And she also included one of these cards, which she's recently had done and um, is sending out with all of her orders, which I really love this as well. So thank you to Ocean for such beautiful yarn. And if you do have a chance to check out her shop updates, I highly recommend it. She does have some really beautiful um, colours, some really beautiful colours in her in her shops, in her updates. Okay, now I have bits of lavender floating around everywhere. Tidy that up later. Um, okay, so next up, I have something really special to share with you guys. And I had thought about doing this as a separate video, but I feel like it just works as part of the podcast format i was contacted a while ago by marta 
who dyes yarn in Maine, I believe it's Maine. And yeah, it's Maine. <laughs> and she she goes through the whole process of sourcing um, sourcing the wool like from the sheep, from farms, and like taking the fleece to the mill and having it spun to like her specifications. And then she dyes the fiber, dye, dyes the yarn that comes out of the mill and then sells it. So, um, so let me just, and she dyes yarn as Mad Fuzzy, Mad Fuzzy Yarns. And she also does fiber as well sometimes. That's Mad Fuzzy, it's her logo, beautiful logo. And uh, so yeah, she's she sent me a little bit of information about what she's doing. Um, so, so yeah, it's locally, produ locally sourced and produced fiber. So what makes my yarn so special starts with the base. I choose to create wool yarn that is sourced from local main sheep, I travel to area farms to purchase and skirt fleeces by hand and have the fleeces spun to my specifications. She drives the fleeces from um, where she gets them from. It's like a six hour round trip to a one man operated mini mill. And um, she selects the sheep for the quality of their fleece, although most are raised for milk and or meat. And because most farmers don't have the resources to process their own fiber, um, she's able to rescue fleeces from their compost piles. She says, I hope someday to own my own mini mill and provide bases for many independent dyes around the world. But that's the story for another day. And she says, once she picks up the finished yarn from the mill, she's ready to begin dyeing. She skeins every um, every hank by hand from large cones and then reskeins after dyeing to make sure that nothing has fallen out of place in the dye pots. Um, she says, I choose to use a variety of dyeing techniques that produce dimensional and exciting colors that are current with knitting trends. I hope you will agree that Mad Fuzzy Yarns have a special market niche and appeal. So the varieties that she has, um, she selects fleeces for each type of yarn base. So I'm talking about the basis that she has. She selects, she selects fleeces for the types of um, yarn based on their intrinsic characteristics. She uses East Frisian, traditionally a milk sheet to produce her fingering weight yarn, a sock yarn with a 20% nylon, um, five star nylon added. And um, the East Frisian has a very long staple length. It's not the softest, but it wears like iron and doesn't peel or shrink and is perfect for socks. She also has a BFL cross that she sources from a farm in Maine. It's plump, soft and ready to be knit into a sweater or shawl. And it's hard to imagine that the farmers threw away their entire first year shearing unaware of the value of this fleece that they had. She, her, she says her experience with farms like this one has her scouting for amazing fibre not being utilised and she's constantly looking for new sheep breeds and fibre sources to turn into incredible yarns that are 100% main sourced had to change the camera battery but um that's just some information about mad fuzzy yarns and now i'll show you the yarns that she sent me um i mean how beautiful are these these are absolutely stunning um so this one is her bfl um dk it's one world dk it's 100 bfl cross wool 275 yards in 100 grams and this is in the hammer colorway really beautiful and it's definitely on the more rustic side, but this would be great for mittens, a hat, not necessarily next to the skin if you're super sensitive, but a really good sort of like outerwear piece. And then these two on her are on her fingering weight. So these are 80% East Frisian and 20% Firestar Nylon, 400 yards in 100 grams. The silver is called Silver Strands and the colored one is called Gypsy Queen. And the sparkle isn't like too crazy. It's not a crazy amount of like sparkle, but it is there and you do see it in person. I don't think it's something that's going to pick up particularly well on camera, but it is a really beautiful um, yarn that has great stitch definition. Uh, that I'm sorry, it has a, it's a really beautiful yarn that has great definition in the skein. So I imagine this is going to have really good stitch definition when knit up as well. This is the silver one, and then this is the variegated pink color. This one's called Gypsy Gypsy Queen. Yeah, Gypsy Queen. And I actually really like this. I know I'm not a pink. I know I keep saying I'm not a pink person, but I actually really like this colorway. I think it looks really. It works well with all the other colors mixed in, and it's a darker pink, which I quite like um, compared to like a lighter baby pink. Um, but yeah, this is really beautiful. I love it actually mixed with the grey. I think they would work really well together in a project. Um, maybe like contrasting socks and stuff. And then also the DK is beautiful as well. So really lovely yarns. I'm looking forward to trying some of this as well. I think maybe one of these I'll turn into socks and the other one I'll use for a giveaway as well as the DK. Um, so, so yeah, stay tuned. I will probably skein one of these up at some point soon. 
we shall see um, when I get around to that. And then the last thing I have to show you, <laughs> I, I told you there was a lot. And like I mentioned earlier, the lovely Kelly from Lay Family Yarns, she has, um, she dyed up some mini sets. She actually dyed up three different mini sets for the rainbow shawl pattern. And she very, very kindly set one of each aside and sent them to me to use either as prizes or to keep or whatever I wanted to do with them. So I wanted to show those to you now. How beautiful are these? And I've actually seen someone on Instagram, I believe it was, knit up a um, rainbows, rainbow wings shawl using this set, the pastel set, and it looks stunning. Like I am not a pastels person at all. Like I don't think they suit me particularly well, but in the shawl, seeing it, seeing them all knit up together in the shawl, it looks so beautiful and it's actually absolutely gorgeous. So this one is gonna be a prize. Like I said, I'm not a pastel person personally. I don't think it suits my coloring particularly well, but um, I can appreciate the beauty that they have. Um, so that's the, like the pastel version. And this is the more saturated rainbow version. I'm not gonna take them out of the packaging because I wanna keep them nice and neat. And I'll show you from the other side so you can see the colors clearer. So this is the darker version, I, I guess, of this. I mean, they are slightly different as well, but you can see this one's more pastel than this. Absolutely gorgeous. I was very tempted to keep this one, but these two are actually gonna be prizes for the end of the first, um, for the Rainbow Wings shawl. So if you enter your finished objects, I'm not sure when I'm gonna do prize drawings. I'm not sure if I'm gonna wait and do prize drawings at the end of the next month to give people a little bit more time to finish the shawl. Um, I haven't fully decided, but these two will specifically go to people who have finished knitting the Rainbow Wings shawl, um, which I will probably draw next month, end of next month maybe, give people a bit more time. Um, and then this is the third set that she, that she did up, which again is really beautiful. It's kind of like, it's quite muted, like earthy toned minis, which I actually love. And it's a little bit different for me as well. Like they are my colors, but I would normally gravitate towards something like this. Um, so I think this is the one I'm gonna keep for myself and maybe work use for like a feature design or something. I haven't figured it out, but um, what I realized is while I have a lot of minis, I don't have a lot of mini sets or minis that were designed to go together, kind of like this. So it'd be nice to add this to my stash for a future design which i'm really excited about um again i don't really work with a lot of browns but i actually really like it together with these other colors and i think they go really well together so so yeah i really have ideas brewing about what this could be so yeah this probably won't be too long before this hops on the needles at some point so thank you again to kelly for sending those across for prizes and for me i really 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 appreciate it um okay Getting to the end of my first page of notes. Can you believe it? I have two full pages of notes and I've just got to the end of the first one. I've probably been here over an hour already. Um, I'm gonna try and be quick with the rest of this. Don't wanna take forever. So next up we have knit along and giveaway news. I've kind of been sporadically talking about knit alongs and stuff along the way. Um, like I mentioned, we have the smell, which is the uh, spin and make along, which is running until, which I already went over and there's, um, link to the group where you can check out the thread. I mean, link to the thread in the group where you can check out all the details. There's a video that I posted, which is called Smile Vlog One, which goes over all of the details again as well. Um, that is linked in the thread that is linked below. You can also just find it on my channel. We also have the Season Sock Club, which is still running. The, pat, the knit along portion for that is still running until the end of this month. And at the end of May, I will draw prizes for that. Then we now have the Mini Licious Pattern Club, which is running, and that will be running until, I can't remember what I said the deadline was, I think it was the 24th of September. So you can go ahead and join in with that as well if you're knitting the Rainbow Wings Shawl, the Waffle Cow, which was the bonus pattern, and any of the future upcoming patterns, um, you can enter the, all of those for the knit along. Then finally, I have the sweater cowl, which is an, like a year long cowl, gonna, not year long, it's gonna, it's gonna end at the end of November, just cause I wanna get all of these cowls finished up by the end of November so I can get the prizes sent out before Christmas. 
and uh, basically just knit whatever just join in with whatever sweater you're knitting i'm knitting a bunch of sweater designs this year and i thought it'd be fun to sort of like spread the love and knit in solidarity with others who are also knitting sweaters and uh and yeah if you the only thing is um there are rules in the threads on ravelry but um the general gist is you can knit any sweater you'd like um however if you knit one of my designs you get two entries versus one entry if it's anyone else's designs that's the only only difference um and i've already started putting prizes aside for that as well i have um two sweater quantities set aside for prizes i mean sweater quantities up to like a medium large size um so so that's exciting so weeks in review what's been going on recently we um had our trip to europe after the last time i recorded and that went really really well we had a great time and um it was just a brilliant trip overall the only I guess negative aspect of the trip was um, Layla kept having nightmares and she's been having nightmares for a while now waking up in the night needing help to go back to sleep and it's just it just been progressively getting a bit worse just before we went away and then whilst we were away it kept happening um, like the first week was quite hard and then the second week was mostly fine like she was sleeping through every night okay no issues and it was just one night right towards the end of the trip where it was a rough night again but then she was fine after that um and then since getting home it's kind of like it's kind of been like every other night she's had a bad night and then the other nights she sleeps through fine with no issues so it was just trying to figure this out and then it got to a point where I was I was doing some research online and stuff and I figured she's probably scared of the dark like she's waking up in the middle of the night she can't see anything in her room and she's just freaking out um the nightmare is probably what's waking her up but the fact then that she can't see anything isn't helping and then there's also the eczema so she starts getting really itchy and then she can't fall back asleep so we've gotten some stronger eczema cream for her eczema which seems to be helping fingers crossed and then um we got her a nightlight so it's not just any old nightlight, we got her the grow clock, which if you're a parent, you've probably heard of it. But a grow clock, what it is essentially is, is a clock for kids. Um, it's a digital clock, but it also acts like a nightlight. And then you can set when you want it to be sunrise, when you want the sun to come up and when you want the sun to go to bed. So you set your window for that. And then, so say you want the sun to set at seven o'clock. So you set it to be nighttime at 7 p.m. And then at 7 p.m., the sun goes away and the sun and the star comes out so for nighttime the star comes out and it's blue and it's just a really low level light that shines out of it and it's just enough for her to be able to see and then in the morning the idea is as she wake, grows up and she moves into like a bed then um you can say you know she'll learn that when when the clock shows a star it's still nighttime so you stay in bed and then once the sun comes up then you can get up for the day so we're trying to start introducing that idea to her whilst also using it as a nightlight and so far she seems to be responding to it really well we've had three nights in a row where we haven't had to go in <laughs> to help her to go back to sleep the first two nights with the with the grow clock uh she still woke up and was a little bit upset but not that same level of terrified screaming like it wasn't even screaming it was just a bit of whining and then she'd just roll over and get comfortable and go back to sleep eventually but um whereas before she'd wake up she'd be standing up in bed immediately just screaming her head off like she's absolutely terrified and that stopped that stopped since we used the grow clock and like i said it's only been three nights but so far so good and last night we had no instance of her waking up at all so that was a win uh, it might have been fluke i don't know i might be jinxing myself by talking about it but um fingers crossed this helps because if it helps then it's a really easy fix and <laughs> quite frankly it's horrible hearing your child have to cry like crying like that at all whether or not you go in and yeah so th the problem is like we know if we go in to help her fall back asleep it's going to take a while it's going to take a long time and then both of us end up sleep deprived the next day like whoever goes in and her but then if we don't go in you have to just hear her screaming like that and basically both options just aren't fun and more often than not i will go in because i can't stand hearing her cry so um so yeah that was a bit of a waffle anyway all that to say i think we figured it out with the night light fingers crossed that, that fixes things not fixes but i hope that resolves the issues and um that it helps um other than that like i said we've just been trying to catch up with work i've been trying to catch up with work and get on track with stuff um i'm trying to get patterns graded and written up and things like that i don't know why i still find it a real 
like mental block to sit down and just type up a pattern. I don't know why. I don't know why that is such a block for me. I enjoy the process once it gets started, but the actual sitting down and starting the process, I just seem to have this huge mental block on it every single time. I don't know why. Um, anyway. Um, and then we were babysitting on Saturday. Saturday, it was quite interesting because both uh, my parents came down for the day because my mum's um, going to Iran today, actually. She's away for three weeks. So she wanted to come down at the weekend to see Layla before she went away. But then we'd also arranged to babysit my nephew Josh for the day as well. So we had Josh and Layla over here. My parents were around, which was actually really good. It was nice having a couple of extra pairs of hands to help out. And, um, and yeah, we had a lovely day with them and Layla and Josh get on like a house on fire right now, which is so cute and so fun to watch. And um, and then on Sunday we had friends come down with their kids who are similar age to Layla. We hadn't seen them since last summer. So it was really nice to catch up with them again. And there was a little food festival going on in town. So we headed to that and took the girls to the park. Um, it was just a really nice relaxed weekend overall. Um, and then we don't actually have a huge amount going on this weekend. We have some stuff. Perry's taking Layla to her par to his parents on the, at the on blah, 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 on Saturday, um, so that I can have some time to myself, which would be really nice. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I think I'll be doing some spinning. I also got my sewing machine back off my mum since she's going to be away for three weeks. She won't need it, so maybe I'll do some sewing. Um, we're planning on, like I said, we're planning on moving Layla into like, just taking the side off of her cot and turning it into a toddler bed. But um, I was talking to Perry about it and then thinking like in the run up, of, like trying to introduce the idea of like her going into her own bed. I'm planning, uh, well Perry's going to build her a little doll bed for her baby. And then I'm thinking of just like sewing up a little quilt and or, like, a little like blanket and pillow for the baby to sleep on. So I think we might be doing that over the weekend. Perry will make the bed. I'll probably sew up some a blanket and pillow um, and something or other. And so she can like learn that you know baby goes to bed and like she goes to sleep in a bed and then eventually Layla will go into a bed as well. And then the idea being that baby goes to sleep so Layla goes to sleep and um, hoping that works. I don't know. I'm just going off of how I think her mind works right now and I don't, I don't know, in my org be terrible but fingers crossed it works out and uh yeah i think that's it to be honest i'm not gonna waffle on any longer i feel like i've waffled on enough for today and i hope this isn't too long but um thank you so much for joining me and i will see you again soon take care bye